Hey, all right, everybody. Well, I'm back. We're going to do a tutorial. And I figured I'd end the 2023 year with a full length tutorial. And that's what this will be. And today I'm going to work on this black, black paper made by Fabriano. So I got this at the art store quite a while ago. I haven't used it yet. And uh, I don't really use oil pastels on black paper all that much. I've done a few. So I'm still pretty new with using on the black paper. But I saw this paper and it was black, black. Not just black, but black, black, double black. And uh, you can see it's drawing paper, 9 by 12, 140 pounds. So it's nice and thick. Good stuff made by Fabriano. Okay. I want to show you, that's what's up here. That's the this is up here I want to show you just how black this paper is okay so what I have with me here is just kind of regular black regular black paper this is Canson paper right so I'm just gonna open up the, this up and you can kind of see you know yeah that's black paper right see that paper okay it's got a little bit of texture to it but you know it's good not as thick. It's only 8 and 98 pounds. Okay, so you got a good look at that. And now let's open up the black, black paper. Black, black paper. Look how dark that is. So much darker. I mean, it is dark. Deep. Right, and let's put a little comparison. So I'll just leave that up since that's already up there. So this is up there. That's the stuff right here. Black, black. And let's look at it compared next to regular black. And it's definitely darker. It might not seem that way on the video, but it definitely reflects less light. That's what I'm noticing, less light being reflected. So it looks darker. Okay, looks blacker. Nice, right? So let's give that a go. And uh, here's a... I just like the way it looks too. It's just kind of glossy letters, black, black. It kind of grabbed me when I saw it on the shelf. I was like, oh, look at this. I gotta try this stuff. I don't know if you're familiar with Fabriano. I've tried some of their papers before. Oh, it's called Ultra Black Drawing Paper. Very smooth surface, acid free, ideal for pastels, colored pencils, acrylic markers, and scrapbooking. And I will say, oil pastels although it doesn't say that but I'm pretty sure it's gonna work for that as well all right and uh, yes yeah, so I got at my art store a while ago I think I got 20 sheets in here well now only 19 because I got one up there all right so this is gonna be and that's 9 by 12 this is going to be a full-length tutorial so sit back and relax get yourself a drink a smoke whatever maybe you want to follow along with me maybe you have black paper Maybe it's not as black as that paper, but maybe you have something that you can follow along with. Okay, and uh, I'll show you the reference photo here. So here we have, I, I like this one. I figured this would be good on black paper. There's a lot of black in here, a lot of dark areas. And we got this really nice sunset coming through these trees, kind of this golden colors that come in here. We've got this really cool river and all these rocks. And I like especially this part. Like right in here look at those rocks look at how they're illuminated they look like pinks and you can kind of see some really cool colors in there all right look at the light on that yeah that'll be fun and look at the light coming through the trees nice huh now it's got a big dark area here so we'll figure out what to do with that so i figured that would be fun kind of a monochromatic kind of only a few colors there and uh, here's my oil pastel so i decided i'm just gonna use my whole set here. I'm just going to, what I got here is what I got. I'm not going to stick to one brand. I'm just going to try to use whatever brand uh, or whatever color that I am going to uh, pick up. Oh, and I got one more little thing, a little contraption. It's this thing right here. See this right here? So this I got on Amazon. It's got this clip, it's got this long arm, right? And then this clamp down here that it clamps it's got a clamp to my table right now but you see I picked this up on Amazon and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my phone I'm gonna put it in here and it's gonna be a stationary it's not gonna move and it's gonna be off to the left 
here and really close up and not going to move so you won't be, you won't be seeing none of this in this video this time as I move around so I like to move around when I paint I don't like I don't like being still I like to move and do this and and so if that bothers you guess what not on this video because I'm gonna have it in this little clip thing okay and I think I got it so it's kind of out of my way so you know and kind of like work work off to the side here and, and it'll have a nice close-up shot so let me know what you think about that if you like it right now it's on my chest and so when I move the camera moves and that's how most of my tutorials are when I move the camera moves and some people don't mind it and some people they don't like that because it makes them sick so I get that I get the motion sickness I understand if you don't like it and it's distracting so we're gonna try it on this clamp for this tutorial and if you can please leave me a comment on if that works for you maybe it's better better maybe it's not maybe you like it on my chest maybe you like it on the clamp all right okay so yeah just leave me a note on that and let's get started all right so we are here ready to go now I just I just attached the phone to the clamp and I bumped it so it's kind of like wobbling around so I just gotta remember not to bump that but that's a pretty good view what do you think of that all right I mean you're right close you're literally about a foot away maybe a little bit more away from from camera to the paper it's a little bit of it's about a foot away okay and uh, so if I move this right you can it's still gonna be in view right and I can move it up and down it's still gonna be in view so if I need to move it around we're still gonna be good okay so let's try this out hopefully this will work out and I'll try to talk a little loud so you can hear everything okay so, before we get started here, I'm drinking this Polar Polar Seltzer water. I've actually just started drinking these about a month ago. I really like them. If you like uh, seltzer water, this is a, this is a good one. This will taste like uh, orange vanilla. It tastes like one of them uh, creamsicles, like the you know orange and vanilla creamsicles that you can get. That's what this kind of tastes like, and it's zero sugar, zero sugar, zero carbs carbonated water with natural flavors i don't know what the sweetener is in here i don't know if it's stevia or something um, contains no juice sweeteners or sodium so i don't know what makes it sweet but i'm liking these i get these at the store i got myself a little eight pack and um so i'll be cracking one of these open when not bad try it out if you like seltzer water this is a good one Yummy. No sugar. Okay, so here we go. Let's get started. So, yeah, let's, um, all right, so I got this, like, light brown. You can, like, see it right here. It's got a little bit of gray in it, but it's basically a brown. This is a Neo Pastel, by the way. All right, so if you want to keep track of these brands I'm using, I know this is a Neo Pastel. I'm very familiar with it. Let's go ahead and use this to kind of draw in the scene. And um, let's see. So over here, we have... Kind of right, like right in the middle, we have basically this side of the river here, right? So it kind of just goes straight out, almost about halfway, like that, okay? And that shows up pretty good. You guys can see that, right? And then, um, let's see, up here we have this distant hill that kind of goes like this, kind of slants down, right? Something like that. Right, and then we have a tree that's uh, right here that comes up. And I'm not going to do the tree. I'm just going to kind of rough outline of where this tree might sit at. Something like this. Okay. There's a tree or a group of trees. Maybe it's a group of trees. It's kind of a dark picture, so it kind of looks like one tree. But, you know, it's probably actually a group of trees. Okay, so we have this big tree group here. And that's kind of like right there. And then um, basically where those rocks are, because on, on this side of the river over here, on this side, we have this a uh, bunch of rocks, a bunch of big boulders and rocks, right? And it kind of they kind of come up here. So this area will be all rocks, right? And it kind of comes up, right? And there's a bunch of rocks in here and stuff, okay? And then in the distant shore of this river, so here's the tree, and okay, and then it kind of 
forks off. Looks like it forks off to the left and to the right. And this part kind of comes back here. And then we have a big, couple of big trees right here. Like we have a big one that goes like this. It goes all the way up off the painting. And we have another one that, and they're grouped. It looks like there's uh, at least, well, this one's got a branch here coming off. And then we have another one, another one that goes like this. Okay, right, and then we have another tree that's, you can see the trunk over there, and then this area is all dark over here, so there's nothing over here. We're gonna have to make something up. And then, um, yeah, so we got these trees, got the river that kind of shoots back, kind of disappears behind these trees, okay. And, um, and then we have these cool rocks here. So we have one here that comes up, comes up about right here. Okay, something like that. And then next to that is we have a big rock that's shaped like this. All right, and then another one that shoots up next to it like this. Right, and then it's kind of shaped like that. Okay, and we have a little rocks kind of boarding around it. Right, rocks. Okay, and then over here, we have a rock that comes up behind this one, like this. And it comes down like this, something like that. And then over here, we have more rocks. These are big boulders, these are huge, right? Kind of a cool little rocky shore, some big rocks. Yeah, there we go, okay. Something like that, just, you know, rough idea. Obviously not everything's not exact here, I'm just kind of looking at my reference and kind of just winging it there. Right, that's always fun just to kind of figure it out as you go. All right, and then over here we have a tree which has got these, um, I really just see these dark branches that kind of come out. And this is all be foliage kind of right in this section here. Okay. So yeah, this works for, for that. It definitely shows up well on the black paper. All right, this is gonna be a bunch of rocks, bunch of rocks, water, tree, and then the sun is basically right here. Right in here is the sun. And it's really bright, so it's a nice bright light. Kind of illuminates everything from the from the back there as the sun's kind of setting down behind this distant hill over here. Okay? Alright. So that was a Neo Pastel. Kind of a light, light brown on that. Now I'm looking at the sky and it's kind of this really um, it's kind of this color. This is an ash gray, I think. This is a, um, I believe this is a Moon Geo. Feels like a Moon Geo. It's got the thickness of a Moon Geo. And I can tell that it's not a Neo Pastel just from the way it feels in my hand. I can, I'm familiar with the Moon Geos, where, how they feel. So this is going to be my sky color because it's pretty much close to what I'm seeing in the reference picture. So I'm going to go ahead and, and start back in here. I'm just going to lay down this color here right on top of that black, the black black, as they say. Okay. So yeah, let's just kind of scrub that in. Now this paper doesn't really have a texture. It is said, it, it says it was ultra smooth, but as you can see, you can see a little bit of texture show up on the paper. When I lay the color down, right, you can see a little bit coming. I'm going to lay this down. And I hope my audio is okay. I might have to um, increase the volume when I go and edit this video. If you're familiar with watching my videos, I don't edit much. I kind of just leave everything in there. And uh, so, you know, I'm not like a professional YouTube person, not by any means, but um, my stuff is raw. All right, what you see is what you get. I don't edit much just because I basically don't really feel like editing, right? That's not what I want to do with my time. I just want to paint. So I just take the video and upload and away we go. That's kind of how I work. So if you're looking for a polished 
video with editing and a cool, you know, intro. This is not the channel for you. Okay, this is raw, unedited, real time tutorial, right? And I know that these don't get a lot of views, these long format ones, but I still like doing them and I think some people do watch them. So as long as some people watch them, then I'll keep doing it. All right, so I'm bringing down that hill, kind of bringing down the horizon of it. I do like the black. It, uh, it definitely is helping out kind of reverse drawing, you know, where that where that's going to be. So, yeah, all right, let's uh, get in the sky. I'm gonna have to do several coats here. It's been a while since I really painted. I've been busy with work and health issues, ongoing health issues that I finally have figured out, right? Finally have figured out my health issues and by no help of a doctor, by the way, because our health system sucks in this country and probably in a lot of places, right? They just don't help you. They just wanna give you a drug you can go in there with problems and they just want to prescribe you a pill. And that's what they do and they get paid to do that. And you know what? I like to find the root of the problem. And so I'm frustrated with uh, healthcare in general. I think it's a sham. I think we have messed up, allowed our politicians to be paid off by these lobbyists to keep them in office, to pass the laws that benefit the health insurance companies and the pharmaceutical companies while the rest of us get screwed. So anyway, side note there, I know I'm nothing related to what I'm doing here, but that's my battle I have been having this year with my health. Okay, so it's gonna take a lot of color to um, cover up the black underneath. I'm used to working on white paper, so um, white or toned paper is what I normally work on, right? I do like toned paper, like a gray or a brown or even a blue. So I rarely work on black. I like the way the color looks, but trying to get the coverage over the black, that's where I struggle here. So this is a Moonju. I'm gonna have to use another brand here to bring it, to get it creamier excuse me, to get a thicker, thicker coverage here. But we're just starting off and anyway. So yeah, I like to get right up into the edges. Just get some more in there. Just get this color. It's basically what that sky looks like. It's kind of this warm gray, but we're gonna add some yellows into it to really get it to the correct color here. But this is a good start, I think. Plus it's a moon job. I should be able to layer Neo Pastel right on top of this. All right, moon is a good one to start off with because it's got some decent coverage. Um, it's got some good colors and it's a hard enough oil pastel and soft enough actually, but hard enough where I can get the softer stuff to stick on top, which is what I like to do because I like to layer my colors. All right, I like to layer stuff. Okay, now also this color also is in the water, right? Because it's reflecting the sky. So um, let's just let's just get that in there. Let's just kind of figure out where the banks of this river are gonna be. I'm, I'm gonna poke through on the other side even though my um, reference photo doesn't show that, but I think it's important for this. So it kind of comes down. Now this side is kind of a blue, but over here it's really warm. The water's really warm because that's where the light is, so it's gonna be reflecting this light, bright, warm color. And it goes all the way down. All right, gotta leave some area for some rocks here. There's gonna be some rocks in there, but kind of poking in, being between the rocks here. All right, and uh, putting in the water, which is really just the same as the sky for the most part. All right, leave some dark areas for some rocks. Okay. Right, maybe there's some big rocks out there in the middle of that water and you can kind of draw around them, right? Get the idea of that, right? Maybe there's another one there. Okay, 
there's some rocks out in the water like that right and then the rest of it's just kind of right now we can always come back and put in more rocks if we need to so let's just get in the water work it now here it's going to be dark because the shadow of this rock is here so it's funny trying to work around my little clippy clamp here I gotta like stand a little different but hopefully this is a better situation for you guys especially for those of it that don't or distracted by the motion when I move my body. Hopefully this will work out better. Okay, so let's go with another gray. Let's try, see, that's a little bit too light. Let's try like a light blue. This is a blue gray. And I think this is also a Moon Geo. It's got a very, got a little nubby left here. So, um, cause on this side, it's a cooler gray because it's just not reflecting the, si the, the, the sky as much. So. It's just a little bit cooler, sits a little bit more blue. Okay. Look at that color right on top of the black. Isn't that interesting? It's kind of cool, actually. I really uh, like that the way it looks. Kind of loose. Right? You see how the river kind of splits. But then this is mostly blue, although there's some darker colors in there, but we're mostly blue. I like to get. You know, use one color and then, and then we'll go from there. Okay, right up into those rocks here, and then over here it's dark, very dark. But we do have some blue being reflected about right about here from the sky, which is a cooler color. Okay, but all this is really, really dark. And so, yeah, let's think about that dark. What do I want to use for that dark? Maybe this. Um, this is a slate gray. It's a neo pastel, and one of the things about this stick is it's kind of greasy. It's a little bit on the greasy side. I don't use it that much because it's hard to get on top of it, like get colors on top of it sometimes because it's so greasy. But it's the closest color I have to this area, so I'm going to use it here, and I might have to use some scents on top of it if I want to get more color, which I'll probably have to do. So, but for right now, it'll work. You see, because this part of the water is dark, and the reason why it's dark is because it's reflecting the trees above this area, right? There's a bunch of trees here and it's reflecting that and it's just kind of kind of dark. Okay, I could have left it black, but I want to try to cover the, all the paper up or as much of the paper as I can get there. Okay, let's kind of spread that around. Kind of move those colors, spread it, spread it. Push it into the paper. Right, kind of this horizontal motion like you see what I'm doing here. Oop. Yeah, we gotta be careful that my whole easel doesn't fall down. I told you this is unedited, so if I drop something, it's I'm not gonna edit that out. I drop stuff all the time. All right. Okay. All right, let's take a little drink of the polar. Mm. And that's good stuff. Yeah, so I have been on a carb, no carb, no sugar diet for the last almost 30 days. Actually, December 30th will be a full month because I started this diet on November 30th. Not a good time to start a diet, by the way, right in the middle of uh, holidays, but I had to do it. So it's either now or never. I figured there's no waiting. So since that time, since almost a month, I've been carb, no carb, no sugar, no processed foods. Um, I'm eating meat and fat. So meat, eggs, butter, some bacon, although bacon, I've kind of cut back on the bacon, but it's mostly meat or chicken kind of red meat and um, like ribeyes, I mean, beef loin, top sirloin, New York steaks, uh, ground lamb. I've been having uh, lamb, which I really enjoy. Gosh, lamb is really good. 
They're really tasty. It's actually better than ground beef. It's tastier. It's fattier. It tastes better. I'm really liking the lamb. So I've been doing some some ground lamb patties along with eggs and salt. Only season I'm using is salt. I, I'll do a little pepper here and there, but it's mostly just salt and butter. A lot of butter. And um, yeah, so I've been on this crazy diet um, for for 30 days, almost 30 days, and it is like changing my life. Now, a lot of you say, what about the cholesterol? Well, that's a good question because I wonder about that too, but apparently cholesterol is not what they say. And um, it's not really about the cholesterol. Oops, sorry, I bumped a little clippy clap. It's really about the processed carbs and sugar along with the cholesterol that's bad. Right? But if you just do the cholesterol with no carbs, no sugar, then it's not really the big problem, as they, as we've been told. Anyway, if you're interested, this is called a carnivore diet. That's what they call it. So it sounds crazy, right? It sounds like, oh, you just eat meat. Like, what are you doing to your heart, your arteries? And yeah, like my wife is worried and she keeps begging me to change, but she doesn't know the feelings I had in my body and the pain I was having. And when you have pain in your body and you can't figure out why you have pain in your body um, and you've tried different things and the doctors, you know, they, they say, you make a doctor appointment and say, hey, I got pain in my body and I'm feeling this pain in my upper, my right upper quadrant area underneath my rib, like what's going on? And then they, you know, then you don't get an appointment for three months and then, and then, it's a virtual appointment. You don't actually get to see the doctor. It's just a virtual appointment. And then it's another three months to get an ultrasound. And then another three months to see the gynecologist, or the gynecologist, but the gastroenterologist. I almost said gynecologist. I don't have that. I don't need to see a gynecologist. But anyway, yeah, so it's like three months here and three months out. And, three, and pretty soon, from the very beginning of when you told you had a pain, you're, not, you're looking at nine months and nothing's changed. And they haven't done nothing for you. And that's where I was at. And I was like, I can't live like this. So I did something drastic and I just changed my diet. And guess what? It's working. The pain that I'm just having is going away. Actually, on the fourth day of this diet, it went away. That is amazing to me. Like in four days on being on this extreme diet where I was just eating nothing but meat, eggs, and butter and salt. So no carbs, zero carbs. Right, no processed food. I wasn't eating whole foods. I would go to the store. I get my meat, get my eggs. I would just make eggs and meat and eat that twice a day. I was eating twice a day. I'm eating twice a day now instead of like three or four or five times a day. Right, I'm eating like twice a day, and I'm I'm not hungry. All right, so that's pretty cool. What do you think about that river? It kind of shines, shines up at us. Let's put in some of these rocks. So. Let's see, um, I'm going to use this, uh, I call it cocoa, I like to call it hot cocoa, this cocoa brown neo pastel, and um, I'll just use that for the rocks for the moment here, I'll we'll just kind of draw them in with this, okay, kind of get some of these shapes here, now this one kind of overlaps, All right? And it doesn't really matter. There. Right, so these are going to be lit up. I mean, the, the way the light comes and shines these up is uh, going to be really cool. So, but I just kind of want to get those where they where they are. Maybe we'll even we'll fill them in. Um, yeah, let's just fill them in. Might as well even though some of these aren't really the color that I'm choosing here, but eh, we got to start here somewhere. So, and let's get a stump. Let's work on the stump. I'm going to get a stump out here. So these are stumps, by the way, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, that's what these are. I'm just going to get a clean one or somewhat decent one here. I got a lot of them, different sizes, but what the stump is helpful is, is I can spread the color in and I can use the point of the stump and I can really direct where I push and pull that color and um, 
I can kind of see the tip of that, so that helps me um, be, be precise. Okay, and oh, I have guess. I think it's my my in-laws on my my wife's side. I think they came back. I can hear them, but we're painting. And uh, once I start, I don't like to stop. All right, so let's try another gray. This is just a regular kind of medium gray, but let's put that in there. It's kind of a cooler color. So there, we got that gray in there. And let's, um, put some more, kind of fill these up. Now these are all gonna change. I'm not gonna add a lot more color to these and really change them out, but, um, we'll just get started with some of these, so. Again, I gotta like hold hold it here so this thing doesn't fly around on me. Okay. And maybe we'll use some of this brown too. Some darks. Now this part of the water is really dark because it's reflecting the lights being blocked from this rock here, All right? So you can't really see the color of the water there. I gotta remember where the edges are on these when I go back and add the highlights. So, um, but I just kind of get some color down, kind of fill the space there. And my dog's whining because he wants to go out and hang out with the people. Hang on, buddy. Hang on, bud. So I'm going to take a little break and hang, hang on just a second. 